Old Cecil. Um, cheers, Dick and Michelle, for inviting me to Punks at Paint. Awesome. Um, love watching it. Great stuff on YouTube. Um, yeah, great to keep us all still connected. Missing all the gigs. Loving to see the stuff online. Yeah, wicked. Brilliant. I'm an old punk, and I like to paint on skin with a tattoo machine, because I like doing tattoos. Always drawing just takes me away to another place. You can just... Play with your imagination, there's no rules, there's no constraint, it's uh, quite often a free-for-all. I mean, um, well, back in the days when I was in a studio and stuff like that, I just really loved meeting people, hearing their stories, trying to work out um, what they wanted and if I could draw it for them and get it this similar to what they wanted, all the same, you know, stuff like that. I've met some really awesome artists along the way. Um, that have helped me out in different ways and stuff and taught mm. me it wasn't easy breaking into tattooing a lot of people just like no don't want you here don't do it i didn't go to university or anything like that i kind of didn't really go to school much at all so i'm self-taught along with everything else i do a bit diy like that see there's a good connection with uh, a lot of the tattooists like you isn't there Maybe there is, friends. yeah. There's, yeah. Uh, we're all we're all starting to come together a little bit. There's, uh, yeah, us like-minded folk. Yeah. Yeah, I've really I've met some really truly awesome and inspiring people. Oh, here's a bit of Louis Rivers here. I really like his work. Bright, bold, colourful. And just below that, we've got a bit of Jasper Patterson. Salt and vinegar sticks. Anyone? What time is it? Uh oh. Beer mat from Rebellion. I think part of my brain's still there. We've got Vortex by the man himself, Dick Lucas. And then we've got another bit of Louis Rivers from back in 2013. I love my head and face tattoos. It was a bit weird at first, the way some people looked at me. But I find it's a great people filter for me. I think if people tut at me, it says more about them as a person than it does me. Ash Harrison, good friend of mine from Phil Cat Arts. Did the snake and the rat and the main pieces along around my head uh, and he's helping me fill in and join up all the other stuff that was there before uh, really awesome guy um, yeah check out his art he's on uh, Instagram and stuff uh, Miss J Cherry did the little bolt of lightning on my face my pal Scripty did the rock the tiny anchor and the in one ear out the other I know it's a culture shock there um, around my head um, Joe from Time and Tide did the swallow on my face. So shout out to Joe, Justin and John from Time and Tide, Falmouth Boys. Right on. Yeah, that's me head. This is an old school traditional iron coil tattoo machine. Right lump, weighs an absolute ton. That's what I learnt on something like this. Um, and it was artwork. It was really hard work. Foot switch, plugged into a power supply and a foot switch. Hit the button, coils react to the spring. Sends you've got a needle going in across there, through there, out here. And uh, yeah, that's a big old lump. Nowadays, I use something more like this. It's really small, it's really lightweight. I can adjust it if I want the bar up quite strong for uh, line work and stuff and if I want to do soft shading or whatever I can run that bar down and make it soft so there's a bit more spring in it and it doesn't hit so hard um, this is really easy to connect up and stuff this has a different connector it's got one of these kind of slightly better power supply unit just clicks in there like that ain't going anywhere lots of flex in it Nice, lightweight, easy to use.
I first started tattooing, we used to use needles like this. Power connect up to there, needle goes in here, and the needle just goes backwards and forwards on this little rotary thing here. This is a rotary machine. But nowadays, I use these things, which is a cartridge, it's disposable, um, it's very hygienic. Use it once, chuck it away. Don't reuse needles, kids. So if I was setting up to do a tattoo, so we now got these very special little um, grip that I can't open. Again, single use, chuck it away when you're finished. Um, so we've got the grip here, all ready to go. Let me take the cartridge out. So the cartridge is just like that. And the needle bar pushes down, pushes that needle out. Like that. So we pop that cartridge into this tube. And one of the beauty of these cartridges is that if you're doing a big, big piece, and especially with this machine I'm going to, I'm setting it up with, um, you can swap out the needles um, really easily, straightforward, without having to change machines or anything like that. This is a little grommet. See that? A little tiny grommet. And what we do is we pop this needle through the machine like so. Loosen that up. And we've got the bar here. Machine through there, pop the little grommet on the bar. I'm not holding this up enough to show everyone, am I? And then we just twist that round on there. So it's popped on. And then we have the needle coming out the end there, right? So I'm going to adjust that to about there. Tighten that up. Tighten this one up here now. We used to use a rubber band to hold the bar in place to keep it nice and straight. So that is pretty much ready to go. Pop that into there. Get my foot pedal out, which is down here somewhere. One set up, ready to go tattoo machine. Really light, really flexible, really easy to use. Um, yeah, I love it. It's um, made working for me so much easier. I'm going to set up my little station here and I'm going to tattoo the Blur TV logo on my leg just to show you what, what, what I do and um, how it all works. Um, we'll chat to, you about you, chat to you about some stuff. While I'm doing that, I think, if you don't know it too much. All right. So, stencil, when I make a stencil. Um, I draw a picture, um, or in this case, I took a print of the Blurred TV sticker. I then turn, put it on top of some stencil paper, some carbon stencil paper. Traced over the design, and boom, on the other side, we've got the Blurred TV sticker type thing. So then I would um, put some stencil stuff on the skin, whack the design down, like that, kind of something like that, or wherever, you know. Where am I? I'm up here, you know, just chuck it on there, stencil stuff underneath, take it away, and it's all there, ready to go. And it will stay on there. Stencil stuff is really good stuff. Hopefully you can see that all right. I've just put the stencil on and I'm just about ready to roll. The old, this one's been here for a few years. I might touch this one up. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of Vaseline. Get the skin all around it, all nice and smooth. It's nothing, it helps with like preventing jolty hands and stuff like that because you 
gloves move smoother across the skin. Simple little tricks like that are really helpful. Okay. There's my machine all ready to go. Okay, here we go. Um, Tattoo shirt, by the way. <laughs> so I'm using a nine round liner, which is nine needles all going together in a point. And later on, when I'm doing the colour, I will be using a nine round shader same amount of needles but all open instead of splayed around in a point. I was always doodling at school rather than doing any school work. I was always drawing on my school books. Punk logos and anarchy this and anarchy that. Some of my friends used to pay me to do stuff on their books like if they wanted a exploited skull with a Mohican or something and I'd do it for 10 bags or something like that. Swap machines a minute, and I'm actually I'm going to try this gadget I've got. Um, see how good it packs a punch. So basically, straight onto the machine and it cords. Let's see what happens. If it's rubbish, I'll go back to the other machine. So yeah, doodling from a young age. I kind of didn't really go to school much. I bumped off a lot, I didn't get on with people. I was a bit of a loner type person when I was hiding behind my shell. But when I managed to get out of school, all the constraints of that, which I despised, and I was finally a free man, I was kind of in, lucky enough to uh, meet the second wave of punk, as they call it. Then life came along, had a child, relationship, you know, had to work, pay the bills and all that lot. Working, working, working and not enjoying it and just daydreaming basically of you know, what do I really want to do. I'm in this overheated kitchen bath, kitchen or bath, I think it was a bathroom, yeah, a little small shower room. In a council house, they didn't want me there, I didn't want to be there, I was just doing my job. And this kept going round and round and round in my head. When the people of the country have forgotten how to disagree, the national economy is said to be okay, and the wages that you get will help you to forget. Do you keep your ideologies or throw them all away? And it just kept going on and on in my head. So, I kind of made a bit of a con conscious decision that day. Fuck work, Bad enough of it. I do of doing all of this. I've always really wanted to tattoo. Let's do it, let's see if I can do it. My missus got me a little beginner's tattoo set up thing. And it all started from there, really. My long-term plans pre-plandemic were to kind of set up a traveling tattoo wagon using maybe an old NX NHS vehicle or something like that travel around Europe meeting new people and tattooing them and getting tattoos as well you know there's a lot of people all over the place that I'd like to meet but that's all on pause for a moment so um, see what happens I'd just like to say thanks to Dick and Michelle for inviting me along to Punks at Paint um, thanks for keeping us all connected. It's awesome. Um, yeah, yay, awesome. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you. See you soon. Right on.